So another thing that is really important about public speaking fear is that the fear of public speaking is actually really normal. And it's actually a part of the growth process. Um, you know, for instance, public speaking, it's a, it's a skill just like any other in that the first time that you do it, you're going to feel nervous. We already talked about that. The threat of failure, though, is fell fairly imminent because we're often speaking in front of our peers. You know, of course, the, the esteem from our peers is very important to us. We want people to like us and trust us. So if we do well, then our confidence is going to grow. If we have a challenge, our stage fright is going to grow. So often this fear is actually created sometimes as early, you know, in, in elementary school and high school, especially happens a lot in college. Um, the reason why is because, you know, I've, I've, I've had, I've had hundreds of people go through my, my public speaking classes over the years and tell me that they've always had nervousness. And, and after asking them a few questions, um, the, the, a lot of times they'll kind of tell me stories about, you know, the, the time that they were in first grade when they had to do a singing recital solo and the, and the person's voice cracked or when they were standing up in front of a class doing a, a math problem in the fourth grade and, and choked or something like that. The most common story, though, um, that, that I hear that, is, that typics, typically becomes the catalyst of that, that fear, or the starting point of the fear, is when they have to get up and give a book report in high school. Uh, you know, if you think about it, I mean, the high school students are really not the most non-judgmental. A lot of times they're very judgmental. They're very critical. And, and so as a result, when we have to stand up in front of a group like that, it becomes a little bit more challenging. And then because of these early situations, no matter when that first instance occurred, when we stand up in front of a, an audience and we speak, often, even if we do okay, we may still consider it to be a failure. In our head, it might be that we didn't do as well as what we wanted ourselves to be to, to do. So the more this happens, the more nervousness will, will actually come from future speeches as well. So many times we we might actually be performing well in, in maybe a business speech or, or at an office, but if we just think that we did poorly, then that anxiety is still going to grow. So um, and by the way, if you're if your stage fright doesn't reduce over time then you probably really need to change what you're doing. So that in the first, the first couple of times that you speak in front of a group, yeah, you're probably going to be nervous. Nervous. It, it should be kind of normal. But the more that you do it, the, the more that that nervousness should, be, should start to reduce. And if that is not happening, that means something has broken the cycle and you probably need to do something different. And, and so let me kind of give you some advice on, on what to do in that situation. So as I mentioned before, you know, the nervousness is normal when you begin to speech, speak in front of a group. However, um, if that remains over time or if your nervousness actually gets worse, then um, you, you really want to try changing what you're doing. For instance, um, if, if taking something away, from, go, another example away from public speaking, right? If you if you've been driving for years, right? If you've been driving for ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, and you still break into a cold sweat every time that you you get on the freeway, that means that something most likely has interrupted your confidence building process. And and this is where folks will kind of interrupt me and say, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> No one can drive for 15 years and not gain confidence. That's, that's absurd, right? Yeah, over time, driving becomes second nature. Well, only if that new driver continues to practice and grow. So if he or she avoids driving and only drives once in a while, and when he or she does drive, they don't get on the freeway because they're, they're nervous, then, um, then that fear is going to remain, right? And, and in fact, that fear can even grow worse and, or even more intense over time. And the same thing happens to, to speakers. So instead of practicing, what will happen a lot of times is they'll often in, uh, avoid opportunities. They've got the opportunity to get up and speak and just avoid it. And in other cases, they'll, they'll tend to use crutches to make them feel more confident or make them feel more comfortable when they're in front of a group. And when you rely on the crutch, sometimes that's gonna, sometimes the crutches, the things that we're trying to do to help us reduce nervousness, will actually increase the, the, the nervousness and, and uh, decrease the confidence.